has happened, a lot of times we develop belief systems based on the culture we grow up in. And it influences how we think and how we believe. And so I understand if you're a newborn again believer and your mind hadn't been renewed yet because you, you get born again, but your soul, which is your mind, will, and emotion hadn't been changed, hadn't been metamorphosized through the word of God. And so I could understand you could still struggle that. But I've heard some longtime quote unquote believers still struggling with whether abortion is okay or not. So let's go to the scriptures. Let's look at what he said, one, Psalms 139, verse 13. And look at what he said, for you form my inward parts. And so when he said you form me, the, the writer of Psalms is saying, God, you form my inward parts. You covered me in my mother's womb where a baby's formed and developed in the womb of a woman. I will praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are my mother's works. Your works. And that my soul knows very well. Let's keep going. My frame was not hidden from you. It was hidden from the mother that's struggling with whether to keep the baby or terminate the baby, but it wasn't hidden from God. When I was made where? In secret and skillfully, and skillfully wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Your eyes saw my substance being yet un. So even when the baby is developing and forming, God already saw us. We didn't come into being once we got into the womb. We were already a being that he sent to the earth, and he's getting ready to show us why he sent us to the earth. He sent you with a purpose. It doesn't matter the process of how the conception happened. You were meant to be here. Because you think about all the millions of sperms or seed that is vying and fighting to impregnate the egg. And the ones I'm looking at, you made it. It could have been another seed that made it, but you made it. You made it. And notice what he said. And in your book, talking about God's book, they all were written. The days, what? Fashion for me, when as yet there were none of them. So even before you had a day on this earth, even before your mother and your father, if they thought about having you or they had a oops about you, God already had a book about your life and my life that he intended to be upon the earth that it may be fulfilled. And that is what we're talking about, living out of your book. Because we're talking about living life on purpose according to the design of the creator. And so we're going to say some things today that really challenges your thinking. And hopefully it liberates some of you today. Because some of us, we're tied to our past and it won't allow us to live the life we were intended to live. And that is why we have an adversary. His job is to fight us, to keep us from fulfilling the mission of the book. He's designed to keep us from fulfilling that mission. Now let's look at Isaiah 46, 9 and 11, and then we're going to dig into what we want to talk about today. Look at what it says. Remember the former things of old. For I am God and there is what? No other. So in other words, there is no other God. Anytime you hear somebody say another God is always small g. That always represents false God. That's gods of people's images and imaginations, which we know the demons are behind each of them. But there's only one God. There's only one creator. 
I don't care how philosophical you become, and you can say you don't believe in God. It don't matter whether you believe or not. That doesn't negate the fact who he is. He's still what he is, whether you want to believe in him or not. But one thing we do know, you will say he's Lord one day. <laughs> so you may as well bow willingly, but you will bow and you will confess that Jesus is Lord. But we choose to say we bow now and say you are my Lord. Amen. He said, I am God and there is none like me. Declaring, this is the part I like, declaring the what? In where? From the beginning. See, the reason a lot of people struggle with God is because they don't know who he is as God. So they think God like us. They think God responds to what is currently happening. But God is God. He don't live inside of time. He lives outside of time. And this is another thing that many of us don't understand about God. God, when he works in the earth, he operates through people. So we get mad at God for what people are not doing that he told them to do. Okay, let me say that again. How many say you people got in here today? Okay. Did Jesus come and share the gospel with you to get saved? How many people? Now, some people, he visited them in dreams. How many people God himself came to you and evangelized you? Now, we may have one. He may show a dream or something. But how does he get the gospel to you? Through people. So if you don't say anything, why did he say, I'm going to require the blood at your hand? Because he's saying... I gave you a responsibility to be a part of changing the lives of people, and you didn't do it. See, this is what we have that is a good thing and can be a bad thing if you don't use it right. A will. The power to choose. It could be good. It could be bad if you're reckless with your ability to choose. So God give you free will. He's not going to force you. He's not going to make you do his will. But yet he'll say, do this. And I know many people. Oh, I know God. He didn't call me. I'm, I've been running from the Lord. How big a fool are you? First of all, how can you run from someone that's everywhere? That's like playing hide and go seek. You know, how many played hide and go seek when you were younger? You hide behind a little tree. There's one, the commercial, I laugh every time I see it. They in the middle of the desert playing hide and go seek. And they like, really? Hide behind a little plant. So how can you run from someone that is everywhere? How can you deceive someone that knows everything? So why are you tripping against yourself? Because you're not tripping against him. As if you're going to do him a favor if you go ahead and do his will. When I'm going to go on serve you, God, that's beneficial for you. Because one thing about God, if you won't do his will, he will find somebody to get his will done. Because there's no man, no devil, nobody that can stop the will of God from being fulfilled. But the question is, will you be a part of the process? Because you get the benefit with being a part of what God is wanting to do. But his plan is not going to die with you. It's not going to stop with your no. Because he knows the end from the beginning. And he always has replacements waiting to get in your spot when you won't do it. So if you won't do it. Like divine life going to stop if a pass away and get out of line or if he dropped dead. No, the will of God still is going to be fulfilled. I just got to be a part of this part. Then he got somebody else waiting to step right on in and let's keep it moving. So don't get it twisted thinking God is like man. He don't live inside of time. He lives outside of time. He already know what the end looks like. Not that he has planned out everything that's happened along the way, 
Because there are some things that free will has caused man to do, just like when the fall of man happened. He knew it was going to happen, but that wasn't his plan for it to happen. But because he knew it was going to happen, the Bible says that Jesus was crucified before the foundation of the world. Do you know what that means? Before he even laid the pillars for the earth, Jesus had already died. Then he set the course in motion, let man play out the play, and then he knew man was going to fall. He already had the plan in play, and in the fullness of time, Jesus showed up when it was his turn to come to the stage. But my question is this. It's your chance, and it's your turn to be on the stage. Are you performing, or are you still back in the dress, dressing room? We're talking about living out of your book. And many of you, you, you playing false characters. That wasn't the one you were designed to play. You want to be the head of the play. He didn't call you to be the head of the play. He needs you to be an extra. Be an extra. Oh. Y'all don't want to, I thought y'all came to have a little church today. So God knows the end from the beginning. But what is the life you were intended to live? Why were you born? Why weren't you born in the 1800s? Why weren't you born in Africa? Why weren't you born in Australia? Why did he allow you to come through the womb of the mother that you had? Or the father, even if he was a deadbeat. See, even because they didn't live up to what they were supposed to, they have a book too. They just didn't do what they should have done. But God said all things will work together for the good of those that are called of the Lord according to his purpose. So even though that ain't how God wanted it to be, God said what I will do, I will take that mess and I will get some glory out of it. I didn't mean for you to go through all that, but since you're here, I am going to use it for my glory and my benefit. You know how many young men I've had an opportunity to help? Because I grew up without a father? Because I can relate. Growing up raised by a grandmother, single parent home, and, and all of the challenges, I could relate. And I was able to use my story as a testimony and not as a sorrow and to get sympathy. See, some of you, you sympathizers, it's time to get up out of your sympathy bed and begin to use your story as an opportunity to change somebody's life. How far has the sympathy gotten you? So let's go on. Let's get into the lesson for today. So God already knows what? The end from the beginning. He already knows where your end is supposed to be. But remember, say, I have free will. See, your free will would determine whether you live out of your book or you grab another book off the shelf, shelf that you chose. That's why the Bible said, what will it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? Or what will a man give what? How many people exchanging their book for one that they chose? Not the book that God chose for them. You were sent here for a reason. You were sent here to live a specific purpose and plan on the earth, but sometimes because of free will, we don't like it. It don't feel good. I don't want to do that. I don't like that. that isn't, it don't matter what. He didn't ask you, did you like that? When Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane, he did not want to. He let you know what his will was. I don't want to drink this cup. But is there any other way? Is there a secondary plan? For me to get this done. Then what did he say? Nevertheless. Not my will. But your will be done. See this is the problem. 
And I think it's a lot of that modern teaching that we have in the church today. Because we preach the word to the feelings of people. Based on what people, we want them to be excited about because we preach to get crowds coming and to keep them coming. As opposed to preaching the Bible and letting people have free will and choose to do what they're going to do. Jesus did not want to have to die on that cross, but he knew he came to die. But he didn't want to die. He said, okay, God, do we have a secondary plan? He knew it wasn't a secondary plan before he asked it. But now the moment is at hand. And he know what is about to happen. So he's like, wait a minute. Is there any way we can do this another way? He knew it wasn't another way because you're the lamb of God. You're the only one that all the big eggs are in this basket. Because if you don't die mankind cannot be reconciled back to me. You are my sacrificial lamb. You are the one that can pay my wrath that it don't go on them but on you. And if you don't taste death for every man, they're going to have to take their own death. So it was love in that garden as he's dropping, he, he's so intense with, with this stress he's under, that the sweat is like great drops of blood. But he know there's no other way it can be done except through him. That was his book. And Prophet Felicia brought that last week in Hebrews when he talked about lowering the volume of the book. His plan was written. His plan was for him to be the Lamb of God and to die. And then you got all these people uh, speaking blasphemy against his name, talking about he slept with Mary Magdalene and, and he did this and all that perverted mess. The reason he didn't have a wife and children and all of that, that wasn't his plan. His plan was to come fulfill the plan of God. He didn't come here to live a long, a long fulfilled life. He came to get his will done and get out. That's why he died at 33. He was finished. Told you last time we ministered this. You're not supposed to die until you're finished with your assignment. But some of us, we get under divine judgment because of our rebellion and disobedience. And Satan go and accuse us before the Father and get a judgment against your life. Amen. So we have to live out of our book, which means we live life on purpose. God already knew the end of your life before he even let it begin. Nothing catches him off guard about your life. Don't think he's in the dark about what's going on. He even said he collects our tears in a bottle. He said the hairs on our head are numbered. He didn't say counted. He said numbered. What's the difference? If I count something, I count this front row right here. Then two people walk out. If I just counted it and I don't go back and count it again, I'm still on the count. But if I number it, that means I'm keeping up what, what the number is. God said the hair is on your head numbered. He said, I'm so personal with you that if you lose a hair off your head, I know it's left. So how dare us say, God, I, I, you done left me. What? See, our perception about God must change, and when your perception change, your communication with him would change because you would know how to approach him based on who he is and not who you thought he was. That's why some of you pray, you beg in prayers. Please, God, just come through this one time. He's not a lottery. He's not a lucky charm. God, if you just come through this one time. Lord, come through, Lord. He's not a lucky charm. When you begin to know what your father is and that he's true to his word, that he's not one that will lie to you. He's big and bad enough to back up whatever he says. You will approach him differently and you won't be begging and hoping he come through. 
You cannot get one of my daughters hoping that I'm going to come through if I told them I'm going to do something. They ain't got a hope. If I said it, they already know I'm going to do it. I hope daddy keep his word. You think he going to do it? What you think so, Terry? I don't know. Tanisha, what you think? I don't know. No, they already know. Because they know their daddy. So because you don't know him, you approach him wrong. You talk to him wrong. Your emotions toward him are wrong. Because you don't really know him. Even though you're his child. Got to look Holy Ghost quiet in here. All right, let's get into the lesson for today. All right, let's, let's start here. Let's go to uh, Matthew 25, verse 14, and I want to give you this point. God gives us all these things, and I'm getting ready to tell you what they are. Gifts, abilities, and influence. We are given the responsibility to steward what we have been given and to remain faithful to the end. We are not to compare or try to quantify what we do, but remain faithful to being who God made us to be. I know that's a whole lot. I'm going to come back to that. Let's look at Matthew 25, 14. For the kingdom of heaven is like. Now, anytime you hear that, he's comparing. He's comparing a natural thing to a spiritual thing. So because you can't see the kingdom, he got to now use something that you can understand so you can understand the principle of that you can't see. He said, for the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling to a far country. So we know Jesus traveled to a far country, to the land called heaven. Notice what he did. Who called his own servants and delivered to his, delivered his what? Goods to them. So when we think about our books, God delivered each one of us a book. I'm going to heaven. I'm going to give you this book that I need you to live out. And I'm going to expect you to finish this book. And I'm coming back for a return of what I gave you. So now look at this. And to one he gave what? Five talents. See, this is why you can't quantify. You can't be comparing and counting. Because while you're trying to compare yourself against me or me trying to compare myself against you, I may not have your talents. Here we go. To one he gave how many? Five talents. To another two. And to one and to another one. To each one according to? That's why you don't quantify. That's why you don't compare. You racing and you, you, you're in competition against your own book. You're not in competition against somebody else's book. I see, see I can sing better than them. I don't know why they the one. that. Listen, get your eyes off other people and focus on what God has made you to be. Because you're not comparing against their book, you're comparing against your own book. You may have five talents, you may have three, two talents, or you may have one talent. Focus on your own book. Quit focusing on other people's book. Now notice, after he gave them what he gave them, he immediately did what? Went on his journey. So he left. And what has Jesus done? He's left. But he's told us he's coming back. But this is the sad part. He's coming back with an expectancy that many of us are not ready for. Because guess what? Many of us are intoxicated with life. That we're not living a focused life. We're not living a purposeful life. We're not living an intentional life because we're intoxicated. And let me tell you, there are some good things on this earth and there are some enjoyable things. But things that are good and enjoyable can become a distraction if you don't stay focused. 
So notice what he said. Then he who had received the five talents went and did what? Traded with them. So in other words, he took what he had and he used them. He didn't say, you know, I got five talents, I'm going to use three of them. He used all five of his abilities that God had given him. Now notice what else happened. And he went and traded with them and made another five talents. And likewise, he who had two gained two more also. But he who had received one went and dug in the ground and hid his Lord's money. See, that's what you and I are doing when we don't use what God made us to be on the earth. We say, well, you know, I, I can't do that right now. I'm too busy. I'm too tired. Oh, I'm not qualified. I don't know how to talk. I, I, people don't like me. That's what you're doing. You're digging holes and you're hiding and burying your talents. And what are you doing? You're robbing someone of who you should be to them. You're robbing people of who you should be to them. See, I love to tell people this. You're not using me. You get the benefit from my obedience to God. And I'm going to come back to that because, see, some of you got some issues of some past hurt that's causing you not to use what God put in you. And God is not going to accept your excuse. And, yes, he wants you healed, he wants you whole, but he's not going to allow that excuse to fly in his, in his presence. So notice, after a long time, and we know the Lord coming back one day, and if, you don't, if he don't come back before you die, you're going to him. So either way, you got to appear before him. He said, after a long time, the Lord of those servants came and did what? Set an account. It's time to pay your bills. It's time to pay your bills. When you live in your life, you got to realize, I have some responsibilities. I have a responsibility of what God has given me. My gifts, my talents, my influence. I have a responsibility with that. See, some of you, you have so much great influence, but you use it wrong. You're so selfish, it's all about you. You really use what should be God's glory for your own. I was thinking about this this morning. I know a few phenomenal leaders, but they lead in the streets. See, now you're perverting what God gave you for your own benefit. Your gifts, talents, and influence, you're using it for yourself. You got great leadership ability. You got great influence over people. You can convince people to do anything, but you do it for yourself. God don't get no benefit from it. See how quiet they got? Because some of you sitting thinking now, like, yeah, he's surely right. But how did I do it to benefit God? See, that's why, like now, I could, I could really go into business and, and make multi-millions of dollars in business because of what God has uh, blessed me with. And even old, later in my life, I began to recognize gifts I didn't know I had. But I could use them for my benefit, but I refused to do it because it will take me away from what I'm supposed to be using them for. So because God told me, he said, okay, you let that go, I'm going to take care of you of what you want. You could go and get it yourself, but because you know that that is for me, I'm going to still get you what you want because you're sacrificing that for me. See, I'm choosing to do that. Because I know some pastors, they, they in politics and they pastors, or they in business and they pastors. That's not what God wants me to do. I, I, he don't really want me doing businesses where I have to actively have my mind and my abilities involved in it. He'll let me do something that I'm, I'm on the back end, a silent type partner, but nothing that I'm actively using my influence to. And I'm not going to do it. Because that, that's not what I want. I want that to be for God. Because I can be very persuasive, but I am very careful with the persuasion. It got to be for the benefit for his kingdom. See, I'm trying to help some of you. See, some of you, you use your stuff, but when it comes to God, you, you act like you don't have talents and gifts no more. I don't know what my purpose is, but yet you just made all that money off your purpose. But God don't get no benefits from it. Well, I tired. He need a little more than that. 
Everybody's supposed to tithe. It ain't no either or. So I'm trying to help you to understand and connect the dots. So notice, so he who had received five talents came and brought five other talents saying, Lord, you delivered me five talents. Look, I've gained five more talents beside them. Keep going. His Lord said to him, well done, good, and what? Faith and servant. You were? Faith over what? Few things, and I will make you ruler over, enter into the joy of, the Lord, of, the, of, of, the, of your Lord. He also, who had received two talents, came and said, Lord, you delivered to me two talents. Look, I have gained two more talents besides them. His Lord said to him, well done, good, and what? You have been faithful over a few things, and I will what? Make you rule over many things, enter into the joy of the Lord. Question. Did the one that had five, that gained five more, receive the same accolades as the one that had two? But you know what we do? We count the five versus the two. But the reward was the same. Because what was God requiring? Faithfulness. Completing what I gave you. See, you can't be responsible for something that's not yours. Oh, see, yeah, that, that went over your head. Let me break it down to you. See, some of you, you're trying to be responsible for something God didn't give you. God, God didn't make me like Billy Graham. He made me who I am. And I'm going to be faithful if, if it's this amount of people, if it's going to a crusade and it's 10 people, or we go to Memphis in May and we're going to do that, that's what I'm going to be faithful with. I'm not going to look at somebody, they, they packing out an arena. They got to give their own accountability. I'm going to give an accountability for what has been given to me. So when I give it back to God, God, I use all, I gave everything I had with what you gave me. If it was a rock, and two rock, three stones, and a slingshot. I was faithful with the rock and the slingshot. It was a, I got a staff in my hand. I'm going to use all that I got. I'm not going to try to put on Saul's armor and live in somebody else's talents. I'm going to live out of my own book. See, some of you, the reason you're not doing anything is because you're so busy looking at somebody else and you think that is what greatness looks like. Greatness looks like fulfilling what God put in your a possession to fulfill. Well, see, it don't look like theirs. He didn't ask you for it to look like theirs. He said, be faithful with the two talents. Then you're feeling like a failure. Because it don't look like somebody else's. It don't have as many people as somebody else's. I have pastors come to me all the time. They plant churches. And I tell them all this time, oh, I tell them this all the time. Be faithful to God. Quit counting people. Count the commitment to do, fulfill what he told you to do. What was it he said when he called you? Let me, let me run down some things he told me to do. Raise me up a faceless army of equipped believers. Speak out against the injustices of your generation. If he's telling me to do that, that's what I'm going to do. I am not going to waste my time trying to do what somebody else is doing. He told me to raise up a faceless armor of equipped believers. In other words, equip the people so they can do some work. I'm not here to entertain people. Even though we want it exciting and fun, who wanted to hear boring communication? But at the end of the day, it's about fulfilling whatever God told you to do. What are you doing to utilize what he's given you? Are you wasting it? Are you living out of your book? Or have you got... Over, got distracted with somebody else's book because it got glitter on it. Rhinestones all around. Ooh, I sure wish I had that book. Now you coveting somebody else's abilities. Because you got old dull looking book cover. I found out some of them dull book covers got some of the greatest content in it. It's about the content. 
It's about the fulfillment. It's about being faithful to what God told you. God said, you're a prayer warrior. No, you ain't satisfied that you want to pray on the stage. He's he trying to wake you up every morning at 5 a.m. and get you to pray. But no, you want, you want your worldwide prayer ministry. Now, am I saying anything wrong with worldwide prayer ministry? No, because some people he called to have that. But he called you to go in that prayer closet. And it's just you and the Holy Ghost. Don't nobody even know you were praying for them. You don't, they don't even know you were interceding. Now you want to write a book because everybody got a book. He didn't tell you to write a book. He said, pray. But guess what? It don't close. There's no rhinestones on your book so people can see. Keep your little dusty cover and let it gloss in heaven. Oh, boy, I sure wish I had me some people. Let your cover be dull, but let the rhinestone gloss in heaven. Don't get caught up looking at what other people are doing. Even if they never cheer you, even if they never know your name, just as long as heaven is being pleased with what you have been called to do, that is what your focus is. It's about the audience of one. It's not about the multitude. It's not about the crowd. It's about fulfilling the mandate of the Father. Live out of your book. See, people think because pop, they think popularity is fulfilling the will of God. I got a question for you. Was Jesus popular in his death? How many people were in the upper room? What happened to all them people that were eating the fish sandwiches off Jesus? I'm trying to help you understand. While you run around thinking it's about popularity, it's about heaven being pleased. It's about heaven saying, he, look, look at my boy. He didn't fulfill my will. Look at my daughter. She's doing it. She's steadfast. She's unmovable. She's abounding in the will of the Lord. She will not be moved. Look at how they operate in, the, operate in the face of persecution. Look at all the pressure and the trouble that they going through to do my will. They could have quit right there. Look at how hard it was. I can see the father calling angels into the throne room. Say, look at here, I want you to witness something. I want you to see what greatness looked like. You see them right there? They could have quit right there. This is the hardest season of their life. Look at them. They barely holding on. And they asking the Holy Spirit for strength. But yet they holding on. They, they could have put down what I put in their hands, but they still holding on to what I got and they holding on to me. I'm trying to speak to somebody that want to quit today. I'm telling you, don't quit. Keep your book in your hand. Keep living out of your book. God ain't never called you to do his will because it was going to be easy. Gonna be many days you're gonna want to quit. You're gonna want to give up and throw in the towel and say, I can't do this no more. No, I'm going to do this. I'm so thankful for my wife because we made a covenant together that we will hear well done. We hear will hear well done. See, some people married to people that are in opposition against the will of God. Things get hard. Well, that can't be God. Because if it was God, it wouldn't be this hard. The devil is a lie. You, let's read the Bible. You must not have read the book. You show me one person in the Bible that did the will of God and there was no opposition. Would you like to have been Joseph? That at an early age, you taken from your family, sold into slavery, and it wasn't your enemy that did it, but it was the enemy in your own house called your brothers. Oh, I'm trying to help you today. See, some of you don't understand the devil worked through anybody. It was his own brothers that sold him as a slave. And if it wasn't for one of them saying, hey, no, we can't kill him, they were going to kill him. And you think you got some problems. You think you got some problem because your daddy wasn't there. How about if you got sold as a slave? How about if they tried to kill you? 
You think just because you went through something, you exempt from fulfilling your book? No, God said, I'm now going to make it a part of your story. I didn't plan for it to be there, but since we're here, let's add another chapter. Joseph could have been a bitter man. He could have been bitter at his brothers. He could have walked around and lived a bitter life. See, some of you, you need to get out of bitterness because that bitterness is keeping you from the will of God. And you don't know what they did to me. Joseph went to Potiphar's house. He could have been bitter. And soon as Miss Potiphar wanted to sleep with him, he was like, if God was with me, he wouldn't have let me go through this. So I'm going to go with her. No, he said, I can't do this and sin against my God. That was a man that knew he had a book. You better go back and remember that prophecy. You better go back and remember that dream. You gotta better go back and remember what your grandmama told you at eight years old. You better go back and remember that preacher prophesied over your life. You better go back and remember some stuff that was decreed over you. I don't care what has happened to me. Because see, one thing about it, I can fold money up. I can step on the money. I can throw it in dirt. It's still the value of what the denomination is. Some of you think your value has decreased because you done went through some stuff. Live out of your book. It's your book that God had for your life even before you were formed in your mother's womb. I'm not going to quit on my plan. You still holding on to what God told you and holding on to him and he pointing in heaven. Look at him. The devil thought he was going to take him out right there. But look at how they press, persevering and pressing through. Ugh. Oh, Father, if you don't help me, I don't know how I'm going to make it. I'm with you. What did he say when, when they went into the fiery furnace? I thought it was three of them. But I see four men, and one looked like the son of man. I'm here to tell you, God is in you within that pressure with you. He's in them difficult situation. I know he's silent, but he's just walking you through. He want to know whether you're going to keep trusting me. That I'm going to bring you to the other side like I told you I would. Hallelujah. 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 You got to live out of your book. It's your book. It is your book. And you got to live out of it. Let the enemy just cause you going through something. Think that diminishes your destiny? No, it doesn't diminish. It doesn't tarnish it. You know the devil can't stop you from fulfilling your book? You're the only one that can stop it. And the way you stop it is you quit. You don't finish. You give up. Things got too hard. So you say... I throw in the towel. Now they got to stop the fight. The only time the fight can be stopped, other than you done got knocked out or TKO, you got to throw in the towel. But I'm here to tell you, the book not finished. So I'm not going to have a towel that I throw in but I'm going to get me a rallying towel. Boy, I sure wish I... <laughs> See, some of you, you've been going through stuff so long, you need a rally towel. 
I need to get my second win. I need to get myself back on track like I used to be. Some of you all just walk through the house. I dare somebody to go to their job tomorrow morning. Come on, Dr. Franco. <laughs> you need a rally crack. Y'all thought my life was over, didn't you? You saw what happened to me. But I got a rally going on. You need a rally time. It's not over for me. It's just beginning. You need a rally town. You need a rally town. People didn't say they didn't see your demise. They didn't see you fall down. They talked about you. They counted you out. They saw when your car got repoed. They saw you get put out the house. All your stuff was on the street. They know you were living with your mama and them. They saw when you lost your job. They saw when you went through chemo. They saw you got kicked out that position. They saw when you said, God getting ready to do this and ain't nothing happened. You need a rally towel. I'm not throwing in no towel. I'm rallying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to rally with that devil. You thought you had me, then. You thought you had me. You need a rally towel. It ain't over. It is not over. It's not over. I just needed a breather. Here I come for you. <laughs> Glory to God. 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 Some of you think you too old. You think you don't miss seasons and windows. But I heard the Bible says, God said I can restore the years that the locusts and the canker worm and the palmer worm, I can restore. I can restore. Hey! I wish I had somebody give me a rally run. Give me a rally run. Can somebody give me a rally run? Yeah, that's a rally run. Yeah! 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 Hey! Hey! Glory! Glory!
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. No give up, it's come back. You know the great thing about it? You have taken some of the best shots of your life. You done took a Chris Rock slap, but you still standing. I decree this is going to be the best season of your life. That God is going to create a rally in your life. He's going to restore what the enemy has tried to steal from you. Because he said, if a thief is caught, he must restore sevenfold. I decree and I declare a sevenfold restoration in your life that it's going to be such a phenomenal season that you won't even be able to remember the pain of your past because God's going to bless you in such a phenomenal way that the blessings will consume your life and your mind and your thoughts so much that the past will seem like it never existed. This is a rally season. A rallying season. I decree a rallying season over your life in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Also, before I came out, the Lord said he wanted to heal some people and perform some miracles. So if you need healing, you go ahead and come. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, thank you. Touch, touch, Jesus, Jesus, thank you, Jesus, Jesus, thank you, Jesus, healing hand is here, we receive it, your healing hand is here, your healing hand Your healing hand, healing hand is here. Lay your hands on me, Jesus. I'll be made whole. Hand is here. Cause your healing hand is here, Jesus. Hand is here. So lay your hands on me, Father. Your healing hand is here. Your healing hand is here. Your healing hand is here. We pray for a miracle. We receive right now. your mighty touch. 
your holy touch in our bodies. Your healing hand is here. We come in agreement that your healing hand is here. Just continue to release your faith in this house today. Your healing hand is here. Your healing hand is here. Thank you for your mighty touch. Your healing hand is here. Yes, your healing hand is here. 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 Oh, your healing hand is here. We receive your holy touch, Jesus. Your healing hand is here. Your wholeness is in us today. Your healing hand. Wholeness is in here. Wholeness is in you, Jesus. We receive your mighty touch today. Oh, lay your hands on me, Jesus. I will be made whole. Yes, your healing hand is here, oh God. Your healing hand is here. Have compassion for us. Your healing hand is here. You have compassion for us, Jesus. Your healing hand is here. You have compassion for us, Jesus. Your healing hand is here. Your healing hand is here. I will be made whole. Your healing hand is here. I will be made whole today. Yes, yes, yes. I will be healed, I will be healed, I will be healed Your today. Healing hand is healed. Yeah. Healing hand is All sickness and disease, you must go from this Your place. Healing hand is All sickness and disease, you Your must go from this place. receive your healing touch in this place today all forms of sickness and disease you must go from this place you must go from this place healing is the children's bread your healing hand is here is here we receive your healing touch today we receive your healing hands in this place today. Your healing hands are here, yeah, yeah. Your healing hand is here. Yeah. Lay your hands on me, Jesus. Your healing hand is here. Lay your hands on my heart right now. Your healing hand is here. I believe you're here to heal today. set me free I believe you're concerned about me Jesus your healing hands can touch me Lord let your healing hands touch me Jesus 
Let your healing hands touch me, Jesus. Your healing hands, yeah. Your healing hands, yeah. Your healing hands are here. Your healing hand is here. Healing mighty hands are here. comes with your hands. Your Peace comes over with your healing. Your healing Peace comes with your healing. Your Peace comes with your healing and wholeness. Your Peace come with your healing. Fire. Your Peace comes with your healing. Your Peace in my body. Peace in my mind, Jesus, yeah. Peace, 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 peace. Sweet peace, 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 peace. Sweet peace in your Jesus. never be the same again cause your presence has touched me Jesus you have healed my body today Jesus you have healed my emotions today Jesus you've restored me to fullness today Jesus you brought me to a better place Heal me and restore me today. Yeah. Miracles are happening in my body right now. Miracles are happening in my body right now. Miracles are happening in my body. Miracles, miracles, miracles. You're the God of miracles. Hallelujah. Miracles flow from you. Yes, God. You're the God of miracles. Miracles flow from you, flow from you. You're the God of miracles. Miracles flow from you. You're the God of miracles. Miracles, they flow from you. Flowing from heaven on us. 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 Miracles, miracles, hallelujah. We receive your miracles in our bodies. We receive your miracles in our minds. We receive your miracles in our hearts. We receive, we receive, we receive miracles, miracles, miracles. Miracles, 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 miracles. Healing hand is here. Healing hand is here. Come on, let's continue to declare that. His healing hand is here. Continue to intercede. 
His hands are here. His healing hand is here to heal. We believe it. We receive it. Touch us, Jesus. Touch us by your power. Touch us by your spirit, Lord. Miracles, 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 miracles. Miracles, 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 miracles. When man says no, you say yes. When man says no, Jesus, 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 you say yes. When man says no, you say yes. sick loved ones. Begin to pray for them now. Begin to intercede for them now. Begin to declare healing over their bodies now. Release healing virtue. Release the healing fire of the Lord. Begin to declare their names. Begin to declare that they're whole and they are healed from the crown of their heads to the soles of their feet. Every spirit of infirmity must go off of their lives now in Jesus' name. Declare it over your family now in this atmosphere, in this place right now. Begin to declare healing, miracles, miracles in my family, miracles, 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 healing, healing. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for the testimonies of the miracles. We thank you for the testimony of the miracles. Your healing hand is here, Jesus. Touch my family, touch my family, touch my family. Touch everybody in this place. Touch me, touch me, touch me. Miracles, miracles, miracles. Your healing hand is here. Your healing hand is here. Your healing hand is here. Yeah. You're concerned about us. You're concerned about us. You're concerned about us. You're concerned about us. We receive you. You're concerned about the pain. You're concerned about my heart and my mind. You're concerned about us. Yeah. Healing hand is here. Let your presence begin to go into the hospital rooms now. 
Let your presence begin to flow in the hospital rooms now. Let your presence flow into the sick. In the name of Jesus, let your healing presence. Let your healing presence flow. Presence flow, your healing presence flow, healing presence flow, healing presence flow, healing presence flow. Every spirit of infirmity, you must go in Jesus' name. Poverty and spirit of disease, you must go in Jesus' name. The healing hand is here. Everything that's not like you, dry up and come out in Jesus' name. Everything that's not like you, Jesus. It's cut off, it's severed. It must go in Jesus' name. Every part of our bodies, we declare wholeness and fullness. We declare for our bodies to function the way you designed them to function, Jesus. Fullness in our bodies, yeah. Wholeness in our bodies, healing in our bodies, yeah, 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 yeah. Healing hand is here. Hallelujah. What an amazing God. Before we go, I quickly want to give you an opportunity. If you're in here, you're not born again. You need to know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. We will invite you to come. If you're looking for a church home, you believe that Divine Life Church is the place God is leading you. Also, if you're a backslider and you want to come back to the Lord, we want to give you an opportunity to get your relationship restored back to the Lord. If you need the baptism with Holy Spirit, with the evidence of speaking in other tongues, we want to give you an opportunity as well. If any of those invitations fit you, we want to invite you to come. Thank you, Jesus. What's been going on? You got any belongings to bring to me? Hallelujah. Y'all give it up. Thank you, Jesus. All right, Elder Winfrey. Hallelujah. Can we give God a shout of praise in this place? Hallelujah. Were you all blessed by that word? Amen. Well, we just have a few quick announcements before we get ready to dismiss. Any first-time guests here, can you just wave at me? Any first-time guests, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for coming to worship with us today. We invite all of our first-time guests at this time. We ask that you gather your belonging and you proceed to guest room two. There's a young lady in the back. She's standing. She's waving for you. So all of our first-time guests, please gather your belongings at this time and proceed to guest reception room two. In there, our apostle and our pastor pastor would like to come in and greet you and hear about your experience. And DLC, as they're going in there, let's make sure that they feel welcome. All right. Any second time guests, can you wave at me? Any second time guests, this is your second time visiting, second time guests. Any second time guests we have here today, I also ask that you gather your belongings 
and you proceed to guest room three in the back. Some of our um, our prayer, our prophetic team would like to come in and encourage you and give you an encouraging word. So all of our second time guests, do you see y'all already know what to do? We making them feel welcome. All right, let's keep this thing rolling. Third time guests, wave at me, any third time guests. This is your third time here. There we go, third time guests. I ask that you gather your belongings and you proceed to guest room four in the back. It's a Q&A session designed just for you, for our third time guests, for with our apostle and our pastor. Let's make all of our guests feel welcome today. They could have chose to worship with any church that they chose to worship with us and we're truly, truly thankful. Also, if you did not get a chance to give, you can do so at the end of service. You can give through any of our ways. You can give through the offering basket up front. You can also put your gift in the gift box in the back. You can give via text message 901-300-2193. You can give via our app. Um, download the DLC app. So if you did not get a chance to give, you can do so at the end of service. Also, I would like to invite all of you to come back on Wednesday nights and join us for our connect groups. Does connect group bless anybody? Are y'all enjoying? Join connect groups. Amen. So make sure you come out if you can. If you're not working, bring somebody with you. Come out and connect group. It's a great time to be able to just sit down with your other brothers and sisters in Christ, recap the message, ask questions, get clarity. It's an amazing time. So if you can, make sure that you come out. With that being said, let's stand as we get ready to dismiss. Father, we thank you. We love you. Father, thank you for that word on today, Father, penetrating our hearts. God, thank you for giving us our victory. Thank you for giving us our rally cry, stirring up in our bellies, Father. I pray protection over your people as they leave this place, Father. I pray that you continue to give us your wisdom, continue to give us your encouragement throughout the week. We love you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Make sure you love on somebody before you leave. All right, all singles, there is a meeting in the sanctuary. Um, so call in all singles. Please stay around. And in just a second, there's a meeting in the sanctuary. Thank you. <laughs> 